So I'm Dr. Jason Williams. So back when I was young, and my grandmother died of breast cancer. You know, I knew that there had to be a better way to treat cancer. And when I started learning that we can insert needles into tumors and inject things and seeing that that was treating mice and curing cancers, I thought, why were we not doing this in humans? And this is the work that I've been doing. You know, going directly to the tumor, we treat and inject immunotherapies. We do ablation techniques, which help stimulate the immune response. And so when you go directly to the tumor and treat cancer, it's a much better way, much more effective. And that's what we do here at Williams Cancer Institute. I'm Dr. Nathan Goodyear. I am a medical doctor and a MD homeopath. I've been in the integrative medical movement since 2004. And it was my personal journey in 2017, 2018, where I was diagnosed with my own tumor that made me pivot to integrative oncology. And I've been running clinics since that time in 2018 in the integrative oncology space. That word integrative comes from a Latin word integrationum, and it means to restore, remake, renew. Our job in integrative medicine and integrative oncology at the Williams Cancer Institute it is to restore, remake, renew the immune system and let the immune system do its job. It's to target the tumor, activate and empower the immune system to do its job locally and transfer that systemically. It's to renew, it's to remake, it's to restore. That's what I do at the Williams Cancer Institute. Hi, my name is Eric Sewell. I'm a medical doctor, board eligible radiologist and image guided cancer specialist. My areas of special interest within the field of interventional immuno-oncology include the tumor microenvironment, immune-mediated tumor elimination, cytokines, the enteric microbiome, and tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. I hold master's and bachelor's degrees in molecular biology from the University of California, San Diego, and a medical degree from the American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine. I completed interventional radiology residency at the University of Florida School of Medicine in Jacksonville. I've published numerous research articles on various topics within the fields of diagnostic and interventional radiology. I have a special interest in the synergistic potential of combination treatment with local regional tumor ablation and immunotherapy for the treatment of metastatic cancer. I hypothesize that metastatic cancer is a systemic disease of immune dysregulation. I'm passionate about advancing the field of immuno-oncology and providing hope to patients with advanced cancer. Ultimately, the immune system is capable of recognizing and eliminating disseminated malignant cells with some help. Pulsed electrical field ablation combined with a personalized intratumoral immunotherapy cocktail may initiate a systemic cascade of immunologic tumor elimination. A lot of people hear about ablation and they don't really understand what that means. And I would put doctors in that too. And so you're an integrative, uh, you know, integrative radiologist and so you bring a very unique perspective to this. And so there's different ablative techniques. And here we're talking specifically about ablating a tumor, cryoablation, radiofrequency ablation, you know, uh, pulse electric field ablation. Can you touch on those and why you ablate, how you ablate, not the whole tumor, parts of it, and then what is the goal of that? As you mentioned, immunogenic. Right. Because that's the goal of Right. It. So that's the big potential we're trying to unlock is that uh, you could get a systemic immune response against, against, uh, against malignant cells in a patient who has metastatic cancer, including you know, off-target tumors that were not treated. You could potentially get the immune system to eliminate those tumors. And uh, you know, they're different, the different uh, techniques for ablation have a different, uh, different immune profiles. Okay. But uh, basically, I guess you start with the definition of ablation, and that's just a way to locally destroy tissues, you know, and you, you know, so basically it, uh, you, the probe goes in and uh, it destroys those tissues for a certain radius around the, you know, the, the uh, business end of it when you activate the probe, and that, that goes pretty much across the board for the, you know, the various techniques we talked about there. Um, so RF was one of the first ones to come out, actually the first, probably before that was just uh, ethanol, percutaneous ethanol ablation, and they just put 100% ethanol in there. Uh, so then, you know, they moved on to this RF technology, which is radiofrequency ablation. It's a thermal ablative technology. It heats the tissues around the probe until those tissues are destroyed. 
and you know what that kind of does it, it ends up destroying those tissues completely including you know the the the, um, the substrate that you need there to to initiate the immune response which is uh, tumor neoantigens or tumor associated antigens uh, basically the the immune system needs to recognize those antigens in order to go um, chase them down and find out you know find the the you know the uh, enclaves of tumor cells throughout the rest of the body uh, in order to initiate the cascade of systemic tumor elimination. It's kind of kind of repeated what we already did. But. Yeah. So then we moved on to, to cryo cryoablation, which uh, instead of heating the tissues, it, it freezes the tissues, and that leaves it leaves a lot of the the uh, the tumor associated antigens intact to be recognized by the immune system. Uh, so that we saw you know and also systemic immunotherapy. But you know finally. We can move on to you know the newest technology, which is pulse electrical field ablation. And the way they uh, you know they did the research on it, they actually uh, treated tumors with pulse electrical field ablation that they knew they were going to remove surgically. And then they analyzed them in a pathology laboratory, you know, cut them open and looked and saw what was there. And what they found was that the pulse electrical field ablation was actually creating these tertiary lymphoid structures. So basically creating lymph nodes inside the tumor, which would like kind of like loci for immune cells to uh, you know congregate and start kicking off that uh, that systemic immune response that we're that we're looking for to get that uh, systemic tumor elimination yeah so basically it was creating a new um, on-ramp if you will for the immune yeah. system into the tumor exactly. yeah the yeah, tertiary lymphoid structures kind of came in and seen a couple of years ago you know looking seeing well you know when you see these things that look like a lymph node, but they're not really a lymph node, but they're near the cancer. The immune cells are congregating there to try to attack the cancer. That that means the immune system is trying to see it, and that was a, a hallmark of an immune response. And so that was you know, one of the things that with like other immunotherapies, you see the development of tertiary lymphoid structures, and you see you know, the, the, you know, the immune system attacking the cancer. And so with PEF, you know, the fact that it developed, it was indicating that it was stimulating the immune response. And the, the interesting thing also is that you can do certain stuff where, like, if you have the patient, you give them steroids, you watch the tertiary lymphocytes, they go away. Go away. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what steroids do. Corticosteroids, they, uh, they, they cut off, you know, immune response. So they're used for, like, you know, allergic, allergic reactions and stuff like that. Powerful immunosuppressants. That's why we don't use corticosteroids. We discourage the use of corticosteroids in our but, patients. But a lot of people use them. Dexa, I mean, dexamethasone, I mean, everywhere. And, then, and there's difference. I mean, there is some literature that suggests there could be some benefit. In certain situations, yeah, right. Yeah, there is. This, but the, I think the one thing is, is that, you know, we're seeing that, like, for pre-medication, you know, the use of steroids with chemotherapy. And so, you know, I, I tried to figure this out. I kept wondering, why are they always giving the patients, like, steroids and chemotherapy and I thought maybe it's because of allergic reactions and, and started looking and looking and, and I started asking oncologists I said hey why don't you guys give steroids with chemotherapy and they're like, mm, I, I don't know is it allergic reactions I'm, like, mm, I, I'm not really sure we just always do it and then eventually of course I asked an older oncologist who who he said oh it's for nausea and I said nausea but I said but don't we have like other drugs like a Dancitron, you know, yeah. Zofran or Emin or things like that. And the, can we use that for nausea? And they're like, yep, yeah, but you know, in the old days, steroids were used for nausea. So it seemed like it's like a, a hangover from like a long time ago that they just have not gotten rid of it. And uh, Robert Vonderheide, who's at University of Pennsylvania, done several articles. I mean, uh, this guy's very, very, you know, well respected. He's done a lot of work in, in pancreatic cancer, immunotherapy, a lot of work with CD40, which is an area that we're obviously working a lot. And, uh, you know, you say like, like rethinking the use of dexamethasone. So, so, you know, we're looking at, um, and we try, you know, to have the patients get chemotherapy, but without steroids, you know, a lot of times it's not necessary. There are some steroids that actually do cause some allergic reactions, and so some of the, the taxanes occasionally, but, but you can still get by with it. It would be better to like, give the patient the drug, if they have allergic reaction, treat them, but not give it prophylactically. Because when you're giving dexamethasone, you're suppressing the immune system, which if with the chemotherapy, you're, you're creating a cytotoxic effect, neoantigens, mm -hmm. which, which should activate the immune system, approaching the systemic to tumor approach, but the dexa would negate that yeah. completely. But what 
what we do is different. We don't go systemic to tumor, we go tumor to systemic. So we activate the immune system. So really the elimination of DEXA or like Tylenol becomes even more imperative. Yeah.